Welcome to season seven finale, Summer Wrap Up, the Summer Wrap Up. Let's get it. Now, as y'all see, excuse my people, they got the TV light in the background, but we're gonna work through it. Uh, they doing their thing, but uh, I would say all this to say this. Um, listen, man, I appreciate y'all patience, our sports, you know, lovers, our sports fans, our people that's been waiting for the sports. You know, we've been trying to keep the sports consistent, you know, all all year round. That's why we had the leads. I see we did the post game. You no, know, we'll, we'll, by the time you see this, you're going to be seeing we did a post game interview, all that. So I'm saying, I'll say all that, you know, just thank you for your patience. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, though the whole summer, you know, we've been working on other things with the brand. And I just want to give a whole wrap up of the summer before we hit a new season of just sporting. Uh, so let's first start with the, uh, the finals. I caught it. Had y'all seen it? We talked about it. I knew that, uh, the Celtics are going to win. They just had too much for the Dallas Mavericks. I feel like Luka defense was a problem. And I feel like Kyrie offense was a problem on why they lost against the Celtics. And the Celtics just had a full team. They was really just a better team. Uh, don't need to overanalyze that. That's really simply what it was. I predicted they win the five games. or win the five games. I predicted it was going to be them two teams in the finals. It was them two teams in the finals. Not only that, I predicted, goddamn it, because of the Clippers. And to me, the Clippers and Dallas being the best two teams in the West. Whoever would have made it out that series was gonna make it to the finals, and that happened. And I knew, you know, with you know Giannis being hurt in the second third, uh, Celtics was the best team in the East. They was to me the Bucks was the only team that could have challenged the Celtics. So that's what it was. But I do respect the Pacers for how hard they played. Uh, Miami, I'm so tired of saying Miami story, but shout out to Miami. Shout out to all teams in the East. No disrespect. Sixers was hurt too, but you know I see they just got Paul George. We're gonna talk about that too. Uh, so yeah, that's. Basically, what happened with that? Let's go on to then what happened in the, uh, the Olympics. The Olympics, I feel like the world has caught up in the sense of knowing other game, the knowledge of the game that been caught up in that aspect. They probably even surpassed us, you know, the states, you know, with the knowledge of the game, but they still don't got that talent. That you know, I mean, when they, I mean, they got the talent, they got the skill set, but what separates, you know, why the USA won and the other didn't beat the USA is because not only the talent is not just particularly all. USA got more talent still, but I think the world caught up with us with the talent. But I think also USA, the athleticism. You can't duplicate the athleticism. You can have all the talent in the world, which is why LeBron is one of the greatest of all time. And some say the greatest because you can't do, you can game plan against LeBron all day, but you can't insert that athleticism. He brings, what he brings athleticism wise, you know, not only that, you know, look at the Will Chamberlain's of the world. You can look at anything on paper, but so you see it live, it ain't the same. So I feel like, uh, of course, you know, LeBron is who he is at this point. LeBron, to me, is not a closer. Never looked at LeBron as a closer. He can close games at times, but to be a consistent closer, that's not him. And that's fine, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not expecting him to be Jordan. I'm not expecting him to be Kobe when it comes to the closer aspect. Or even on that standpoint, you know, I didn't grow and mature to know that all these three players, they were like, for compared to Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, they their own player, they their own person and they own great just because they do what they do great you know what i'm saying we ain't got to try to compare the three you know what i'm saying now of course you can still hear me at times be like oh no i'm gonna take my guy kobe over everybody which is true but what i'm saying is that's the beauty of greatness greatness doesn't have to be your definition of greatness greatness is what that person makes greatness you know what i'm saying so nah, so i'm not expecting Brian to be no closer so to say that is uh bond held team usa afloat you know while curry was struggling well, he didn't get his shot going yet. KD was hurt. He held Team USA afloat. Then finally, when it was time to close them series, you had KD come through. Then you had Curry come through in them last two games. And they did what they were supposed to do. So that was, to me, I just appreciate the three greats, you know what I'm saying, of that generation. You know, we got the, uh, we got the, we got the Bill Russells, we got the Wilts, we got the Larry Bird, we got the Magic, the Magic Larry Bird, have an order you want to put it. Then we got the Michael Jordan era. Then we got the Kobe era. And then after that, you got the LeBron, Steph, and KD. I feel like they all share an era. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, I just appreciate them three greats of that era being able to, you know what I'm saying, come together one last time. But I don't think it's going to be the last time. They're got they going to shock y'all either. They're going to do another one in LA, a 10 year state, and Bonnie going to retire. No, they're going to they gonna try to run it back. Or. They're going to join teams in the future, somehow, some way. I'm calling it now. So, you know, like I said, I appreciate they just giving us that moment. You know what I'm saying? So, we started that. Let's talk about NBA free agency. Uh, NBA free agency, uh, I was disappointed to see um, Paul George not rejoin the Clippers. 
You know what I'm saying? But I can understand you gotta get that money. You know what I'm saying? And the dude, you know, in the Clippers defense though, PG didn't show up these series like we needed you to. You know what I'm saying? In the times that you could have pushed the series over the edge, you didn't come through. Like for instance, I never forget was that game one against the Suns. It was probably game one and game two when you missed some free throws against the Suns. And that right there would have just separated the whole series. Y'all could have advanced to the finals with Kawhi being hurt. It's like little details like that. I don't never forget. Uh, but PG wasn't at your best. But you did play better than the rest. So I understand why you feel like you got disrespected. You know what I'm saying? So I understand PG get that bad. You know what I'm saying? And to me, PG, I don't like how people say, hey, on the Clippers no more. He's really just washed up. Just no, PG is still cold. He still even played good last year. I just think what Harden getting inserted to the Clippers is it took time for him, you know, to jail with them. You know, for all three to jail, all four to jail. They're speaking out the four Westbrook. I don't like to see Westbrook go to the Nuggets. I feel like I'm glad Cooper's there make up a downfall. But we gotta be real about Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, my guy, he's been my guy since he came into the league because he's the guy that remind me of my guy being cold. And when y'all see behind me, you know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I respect Russell, but I gotta be honest about Russell. You no, know, I'm just saying this. You know, I always say it gets me and my people because I never want to make everything public. Because every time we say something, it can know. You know, people take it out of context. You know what I'm saying? When we say, you know, we get all respect. You know what I'm saying? And they know when I'm speaking sports, I know my shit. And I will say that and say this, and I mean it's the most respectful way. I I always told my people Westbrook was always working on the wrong things, and you just just always look at what he's working through. Like when you when he posts the videos, just always look at he's working on his athleticism, he's working on his finishing the basket, all that. You know that's cool, but that jumper, he has to work on that jumper and take it more serious. He probably do it every now and then, but most of the clips is never jumper. His weakness, his biggest weakness is his jumper. You know what I'm saying? It's his three point shooting. You know what I'm saying? Mid-range. He used to have a mid-range. Don't know what happened to the mid-range. I think that's just all confidence. You know what I'm saying? So I say I have to say this, man. I just think Westbrook was working on the wrong things. And if he would work on the right things, he would have stayed with the Clippers. You know what I'm saying? He probably never even would have got to Clippers. Probably would have stuck with L.A. But L.A. situation was just terrible. The Lakers situation was terrible. The L.A. Clippers situation was the right situation for him. But he just couldn't hit them timely shots. See, with quiet being hurt, I can't. I hate that quiet can't stay. It's quiet was just to me. Quiet right now would be in the talks of Kobe and Jordan. If he would have just stay healthy, if he could just stay healthy, you know what I'm saying. So he's really the let down. He's really the reason why the Clippers was you know they let down. You know they was you know they ain't been showing up. You know what I'm saying because he can't stay healthy. Because even with PG, um, not showing up, quiet did still did his thing. You know what I'm saying. But the difference is why they was wasn't. And I want PG to understand this. The reason why they wasn't gonna pay PG, they was gonna pay you money. PG, the way they pay Kawhi is because they show Kawhi put a team on his back when you hurt. But they can't never see you put a team on their back when he's hurt. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's the only reason why you didn't get the bag, PG. I just hope you understand that. Now, of course, y'all look at Pawn the same. But let's be honest, y'all not the same player. There's Kawhi and there's PG. Probably just a tier below. You know what I'm saying? If we talk about skill-wise, y'all up there. But we talk about accomplishment-wise and who's really that best player-wise, we know who it is. So I said, I just say this. We have to work on the weaknesses. I wish PG would have worked on his weaknesses, and his weaknesses was just team leading. He couldn't, he couldn't lead his team. You know what I'm saying? Him and Harden couldn't lead. Shout out to Harden for taking the pay cut for one. Keep stay with the Clips. PG won't want to do that. He want to get his last back, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? So I started to say this, Russell. You got Russell, you got to work on your weaknesses, my dog. That jumper, man. Because you go, you with a team with Denver now. They swing the ball fast, and you're going to have some open looks. Because Joker draws a lot of attention. I need mean, you to hit them shots, bro. You got to hit them shots, man. But I would love to see Russell get a ring. So... Or anything that can happen for my daughter to get a ring. But once I say this out of love, no disrespect, I'm not going to be like them other niggas. You know them niggas I'm talking about that be sitting there talking shit about you. I like them other niggas, but I come from a place of love, nigga, because I care about you. I want to see you win, nigga, and do your thing. My nigga, you got to get a jumper, bro. You got to get a jumper, a catch-and-shoot jumper. You got to get a one-dribble jumper, something. You know what I'm saying? Because, bro, when the games condense, the playoffs condense, as you see it, as you know, bro, you're going to have to hit that outside shots. And they were going to make the playoffs. And you're going to have them outside shots to hit in the playoffs if you're going to hit them. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's a perfect pickup because it also lights a fire under Jamal Murray. It lets you know, like, hey, nigga, you ain't been at your best lately. So, hey, if at any point, nigga, you, we got nigga to run alongside you. And don't shout out to that boy Christian Brown out there. I don't want to pronounce his name wrong. Uh, but he a cold boy out there, too. But we got an awesome nigga that can take your spot now in Westbrook. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, bro. So, yeah, Westbrook just getting jumper. You know, for agency, so to me, that was the two biggest signs of free agency was a PG and a... Uh, Westbrook, I can't really remember what other one it was. I think the Andre Drummond one, that one was dope to me. Shout out to Andre Drummond. Don't sleep on that one. Him going back to the Sixers. I think the Sixers can be a good team, but can they stay healthy? 
Okay, PG, even when Joel is out, can PG leave? Because the same things with Quiet. When Quiet was out, can PG leave? That's what it come down to. To me, that was the two biggest uh, sides was PG and the West Point. But just to think they was all on the same team. The Clippers could have stayed on the same team. But don't sleep on the Clippers. I still think they're going to be a good team. Uh, I think the Lakers been making some sneaky moves. Shout out to my Lakers. But uh, I think right now it comes down to, can they, I told y'all what was going to happen and what was going to happen if we did it, you know what I'm saying, and what I said was going to happen. Basically, I said, you know, just go back to the past episodes where I said what we needed to do to beat the Denver Nuggets. We didn't do none of them things that we that I said we needed to do. You know what I'm saying? One of them things was LeBron closing. It was one of those things was uh, was AD will outplay Jokey. It. it was uh, also Reeves going to outplay, uh, you know, Jamal Murray, things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? You know, just go back to that video that I said. But basically what I said, bro, now I think Austin Reeves, I expect, I'm calling a big year out of Austin Reeves. He's going to have a huge year. I'm calling that. But, you know, shout out to Bonnie James getting drafted. That is that is huge. I love to just see history. You know what I'm saying? Everybody hated, you know what I'm saying, on what happened. But, you know, the white man do it all the time, bro. So you're telling me LeBron can't use his power and all he done for the league, you know what I'm saying, to bring his son? I don't like that. So, what I, you know, what I say is I love to see history. Like Brian do good his first year, right? He do bad. I just love the fact we're gonna win his history and now we get to see his son play with his father, father play with his son. Shout out to Brian and shout out to Bronny, you know what I'm saying, for making that shit happen. Yeah, I'm calling now though too. But I'm gonna say long enough in the league for him to play with either both of his sons or him either play with the other sons. Look how his contract is lining up. So I'm calling that too. He's gonna try to play with both of his sons. If not, at least one of them. Yeah, you know I'm saying. You know, saying what I mean by one of them. I mean like he gonna play with Bonnie, but even if he came, if he wanna stay with Bonnie, he gonna try to play against Bryce. Yeah, you know I'm saying. But it's gonna happen. But Bryce still gonna be in the lead with Bryce into the lead. I'm calling it now. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Gone and anything major injury happen. You know what I'm saying. I don't wish that on nobody. I don't want that to happen to nobody. But like I said, shout out to that boy Bryce. Shout out to Bonnie. I don't want to win his history. As far as Lakers, I feel like it's gonna be Austin Reeves year. But I still feel like they can't be the top of the top teams. They see like a piece or two away from being a top of the top team. I mean, that one piece that's going to just give that extra score and that extra scoring boost that maybe Austin Reeves or the Austin Reeves can do that. They can be right in where they want to be, if not better than where they was. So, shout out to that. Uh, let's go on to the NFL. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, from what I've seen too far, so, so far, we're two weeks into the NFL. Um, let's just break the ice. I know I'm a diehard Chicago Bears fan. Now, I told y'all we should have kept Justin Fields. I told y'all we should have kept Justin Fields, but hold on now, hold on now. But two things can still be true. We should have kept Justin Fields and built around him. You know what I'm saying? That's what the Eagles did with Jalen Hurts. You know what I'm saying? That's what all the great organizations do. They build around their QB. They don't try to go get a new QB, then try to build around them. No, they build around a QB that's already good or great or with the potential. And then, you know what I'm saying? Then you see the success afterwards. The Bears fucked up on that. Now, I will say this, though. Two things could be true. We should have kept Justin Fields, and it's also too early to judge Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, if I'm dissecting the games, looking at the games, he's, what he's doing, he's getting the ball out fast. Not only is he getting the ball out fast, his first game, his uh, first game, his number one receiver, you can tell he got a better ball with Keenan Allen than he does DJ Moore on the field. So, Keenan Allen wasn't there week two. So, we won week one, we really was supposed to win week one. Shout out to the defense. I told y'all, look up even for previous uh, videos or whatever, uh, no, I probably I just told my people in my main circle that the Bears are going to have a top five and not top three defense this year. If not the top one. You know what I'm saying? We finished last year at top five, then we got sweat. When we got sweat, we finished top five. You know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say with this is Caleb Williams right now, he's doing what he's, you know, he's doing everything that the Bears organization want him to do. But what I want him, what I want him to do is I want him to do what he does because that's how the Bears organization want motherfucker Justin Fields. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Kelly Williams, you got to be able to learn. And I see that CJ Stroud video, they like, oh, this ain't that, a nigga just lost. You know what I'm saying? That one did a nigga just lose. We got to also think like Kelly Williams, too. Kelly Williams thinking in his head, like, nigga, I'm that nigga, too. You know what I'm saying? But see, I need you to keep that mindset with the Bears organization. Because Justin Fields felt like he was that nigga, too. But then what they did with Justin Fields, what they did with him. They did try to make him to the nigga they want him to be. That's what these organizations do. That's what the white man do. That's what the man do. Not me trying to get too deep. But they try to make you what they think you should be, you know what I'm saying? 
And what I want Kerry Williams, that what I remember is like, nigga, and like CJ Stroud said, he said, it right, like, nigga, there's a reason you here right now, nigga. You feel what I'm saying? There's a reason you was drafted in this position, nigga. So don't forget who the fuck you is. To me personally, I think Caleb Williams' biggest downfall right now, he's not running the ball enough. You gotta run the ball, my dog. Now, I say, I'm, I know you're trying to prove that he's a QB in the pocket, but see, that's what they're trying to make Justin Fields. Do y'all see? I'm a diehard Bears fan. Do y'all not see the similarities? They're trying to make Justin Fields somebody he was not. You know what I'm saying? Justin Fields a dual threat. They want Justin Fields to stay in the pocket. They try to do the same thing with Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson's like, nigga, fuck it, this is me. Then you try to do the same thing with Vic when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? The Vic was like, fuck it, this is me. The most success, the best success gonna come, Keller Williams, when you decide and when you finally look in that mirror and really know when it comes down on that field. I know you know you, you, regardless, nigga. I can tell by the way you talk, I can tell, you, tell by the way you carry yourself, nigga. Because I got a lot of, you, I see a lot of, me and you and not you and me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not even trying to big boy you shit like on some TJ Strauss, like he said, nigga. But like I'm trying to say, nigga, until you look in that mirror to know, nigga, that you is you, nigga, on that field, nigga, you know what I'm saying? You're going to keep having the motherfucking uh, struggles that you have. So I'm trying to tell you, Caleb Williams, nigga, you have to be that nigga you was at USC, that dual threat, nigga. You're not wondering enough, my nigga. I know you want to get to what receivers the ball. I know you want to prove to people that you can stay in the pocket. All that is beautiful, nigga. We already know you can do that, nigga. But what I want to see you do, and I know you want to stay healthy too, nigga. But nigga, you gotta get out that pocket, my dog. When you see that bitch collapse and get out, you know what I'm saying? Don't try to hold on to that ball. That's why you keep taking them hits. That's why you try, you know, that's why you keep taking them hits because you even running too late. But nigga, as soon as you see a lane to go, sometimes you just gotta go, nigga. And so now when you run with the ball, nigga, that's for then bring the defense up and that's when you're gonna take the ball over their head, nigga. Them shots are gonna open up. That's just me personally what I'm saying. Seeing. Because nigga, I'm trying to tell you that's what they try to do with Justin Fields. Justin Fields with that dual threat. They try to make up everything, but not that dual threat. Damn motherfucking Caleb Williams, I'm trying to tell you, my nigga. Bro, you that dual threat, nigga. What are you threatening right now? If you're not being a dual, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to tell you, my nigga, you have to be that dual threat. Because Caleb Williams, I'm calling right now, they trying to, right now they trying to make you Justin Fields. What I mean by that is, nigga, Justin Fields could do everything you could do, and you could do everything he could do when he first entered the league. Then what they did was, nigga, nah, nigga, we need to stay in the pocket mode. We need you to do this, we need you to do that. Now, nigga, I'm trying to tell you, nigga, I know Kobe, your nigga, like Kobe, my nigga, but Kobe was also him, bro. Kobe was like, nigga, this is me. You know what I'm saying? You have to have that, this is me. I, you can do the Kobe's post, and you can love all the Kobe posts like I do, nigga, because Kobe my guy, too. You know what I'm saying? But Kobe also understood who he was, nigga. You got to understand who you is, my nigga. Don't let nobody in that organization try to take you and minimize you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not into hearing what they saying. You know what I'm saying? But I can just see it. But I'm seeing about you not winning the ball enough. You know what I'm saying? You hesitant to run. Bro, that is going to open up the game in itself. You just become a door threat. Just run the ball, my dog. At times. Even if it's not design runs, nigga. Scramble out that pocket and get going, my dog. You know what I'm saying? Then watch how everything else is open up. But like I said, two things can be true. Y'all being too hard on Caleb too early. He can still be generational. And the other is that Justin Fields, we should have kept Justin Fields because we should have built around the QB. My problem was never with Keller Williams. It, my problem was with the organization because the organization should have known and should have been seen that Justin Fields was never the problem. The problem was the O-line. As you see, as they're not blocking Keller Williams, as you see Keller Williams taking them hits. But in the O-line defense, in the Bears, even the fence, that Texans defense is tough. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I think my belt spit out somewhere. That Texas defense is that Texas defense is tough, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So with them being tough, my nigga, bro, we used to face like a Super Bowl contending team. Now, I'd be nervous if we lose to the coast. This is Friday. I'd be nervous if we lose to the coast on Sunday in two days. I'd be nervous then a little bit like, damn, okay, we can't beat the coast, nigga. Like, okay, maybe it'd be a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because they struggle. But no, nigga, I think we're going to win that game, nigga, just because, nigga, our defense and just because Kerry Williams is going to come back into his own, nigga. Like I said, K. Wilson faced two top defense. The first game, he had two DTs in his face. One of the best in the league. Two of the best in the league. Damn, the next game, he had a whole D-line. That, that's, that Texas defense is Super Bowl legit. You know what I'm saying? That's a Super Bowl legit team. So just be patient with Caleb Williams. The other could be true, too, that we should have kept Caleb. I mean, so be patient with Caleb Williams. Be patient with Caleb Williams, excuse me. And then the other could be true, too, that we should have kept Justin Fields. Because... The QB was never the problem. The QBs is not the problem. It's what's around them. It's the old line. It's the management. It's the coaching. You know what I'm saying? That's all. So I said, I say this. Thank you for some wrap up. Why predicting the Super Bowl this year? Give me, it's hard to bet against the motherfucking uh, Chiefs, but give me the Texans and give them my Bears. To me, because the Bears is the best team in that, to me, in the NFC. 
But I do like what I'm seeing from the Eagles, though. Shout out to the Eagles. They do that thing. But, yeah, give me the give me the Bears. I got Bears in Texas in the Super Bowl. Now, is it going to happen? No, that's who I want to be. And so, really, what I want is a Mahomes versus Caleb Super Bowl. So, but I think I can't go against Pat, you know, Pat Mahomes, but give me a Texas coming out there. And then give me uh, the Bears coming out. Yeah, give me Texas and Bears. That's what I want. But what I think is actually going to happen, give me Mahomes and give me... Give me the Eagles. Yeah, I'll be safe bet. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Give me my homes or give me Cowboys. Give me my homes or Cowboys. Some my rap. Now, hey, that's just my week. That's just my week two predictions. My predictions can change, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And then, before we go anywhere, shout out to WNBA. Can't forget about the ladies. I was going to do this separately, but I might as well, no, add this into this episode. Shout out to Aja Wilson being the best player in the, in the league as she's been for the last past, what, three or four years. But also, also, though, Y'all gotta give Kaylin Clark her respect. Give Kaylin Clark her motherfucking respect, buddy. I know everybody like I know it's not popular, you know that you know this that third, but Caitlin is the reason why the WNBA. Um, let's be honest, he's a, probably not the sole reason. You know what I'm saying? Because you got the Angel Reese's of the world, you got the Angel Wilson's of the world, but we gotta give we gotta give respect to what respect is. Kaylin can't help and can't be mad that Kaylin Clark is that girl. You know what I'm saying? I just wanna say that to all the ladies, man. It's okay to admit that you was wrong about her. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to admit that you even hate a little bit. But let's understand, though. Listen, I respect Kendall Clark. My respect for her even with more up. She ain't taking shots at nobody. But I already taking shots at her. Rather, she didn't got into it with Kendy Carter. She didn't got into it with Carrington. And she's still tall. And she held her own against all. You know what I'm saying? And she came back. And then you look at it. She ended up not only breaking like every rookie record, but then she ended up then coming back and then beating each team later that season. You know what I'm saying? Then to look at it, she got the last laugh because Chicago Sky ended up not being in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So, I was going to say this. Kayla Clark is that it's okay to embrace her. It's okay to know the reason that the league is going up is because of her and others as well. But I understand where the hate is coming from from the others because they're like, damn, what's our love that? It's not just because of her. And they ain't right. It's not just because of her. You know what I'm saying? But we got to understand it's a big reason. A big part is because of her. And it's okay to admit that she's that. You know what I'm saying? So, these are my predictions. I got New York uh, beating the dream. I got, uh, who's that two seed? Damn it. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm trying to do this shit off my head. Uh, who the fuck? Oh, yeah, the Minx. I got, the, oh, yeah, the Lynx. I mean, I call them Minx because the Minnesota and Lynx. I like to mix them. Then I got the Lynx uh, winning out there round. I got them beating the uh, the Mercury. Shout out to uh, that girl, uh, Tarasi, on her last season, possibly. Uh, and going to calm down on my young girl. Jackson, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Rakia, man. I fuck with Rakia. Shout out to Rakia. I fuck with Rakia. Hey, I'm letting y'all know now Rakia is that nigga. Motherfucker. Fuck. Hey, nigga, I'm going to tell you. See, nigga, the, the beauty of this shit, nigga. See, I can say what the fuck I want here. Nigga, they can't say what they want in these other broadcasts. I ain't going to take no shots at them, but nigga, I'm the boss. I'm the CEO here, nigga. Rakia is that nigga. Rakia Cole, nigga. I'm trying to tell you, Rakia, to me, really the most offensively sound rookie in the game last year. Because, you know, basically we're not counting last season. But Rakia is the best rookie, in my opinion. Offensively sound, nigga. She can shoot the ball. You know what I'm saying? She can motherfucker. She can. What you want a three ball, nigga? She got it. What you want a midi, nigga? She got it. What you want a motherfucker layup, nigga? She got it, nigga. You know what I'm saying? She can do all that, nigga. Now, her only weakness is, I would say, it's her handle. But I know she's going to work on her handle since only year one. You know what I'm saying? But, nigga, offensively wise, nigga, she's the best in the league. Offensively sound. Because getting a bucket to her is too easy. But Kia Jackson is that, nigga. She is that nigga. So don't sleep on Rakia Jackson, nigga. I'm calling it now, nigga. On a real nigga. Like I said, they can't say that shit, nigga. They want you and these other networks to talk about the others. I ain't gonna say their names. You know what I'm saying? But they want you to talk about the Kevin Clarks, the Angel Wilsons, even the Angel Reese's. Ain't nothing wrong with that, nigga. But don't forget about motherfucker Rakia Jackson, nigga. She's that nigga on a real nigga. On a real spill, nigga. So, uh, I said I had to say this, though. Okay, so I got, uh, yeah, Griner Cheer. I fuck with you. You know, Griner, welcome back home. You know, I fuck with you. But, man, chill out on the rug, man. And for all y'all was talking about the fight, nigga, I know about, I know, nigga, <laughs> nigga, shit, man. I know this shit, nigga, tats up with all that nigga, nigga. What the fuck they talking about, nigga? I'm from all that shit, nigga. I'm with all that, you know what I'm saying? Woo, woo, nigga. My shit, throw my shit on all that, nigga, all that, nigga. I'm from all that shit, nigga. I knew what fucking what Key was doing, man. What she was doing, nigga, is basically, nigga, <laughs> what you do in the hood, nigga, you don't never let nobody swing on. Fuck us all, in the hood, nigga, you don't never let nobody walk the fuck up on you, nigga. That's how it go in the hood, nigga. You don't let nobody walk up the fuck up on you, nigga. I didn't want a lot of fights, nigga. I didn't want a lot of motherfucking fights, nigga. I'm trying to tell you, nigga. Bro, rule number one, you don't let no motherfucker walk up on you, nigga. And not only that, nigga, 
she was get she booted up, nigga. So she was ready, nigga. So he, she created a space, and nigga, she was ready forever. Cause because Glider thought she could little good. She thought she could bully her. They was saying, come up on her, and motherfuckers just grab on her, and then like you know, just basically like, hey, motherfucker, this is that. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? Like on some some shit you do to the little brother. Like, hey, calm the fuck now. Like yeah, you you wilding right now, but calm the fuck now. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't going for that. So what she did, nigga, she ah, get that hand off her face. Oh, so you for real? You really trying to do this? And then she pulled it up, nigga. She wasn't scared. I want Glider to know though too, nigga. I'm I'm 26 now, nigga. I understand now, nigga, because I got a lot of little brothers, a lot of little siblings. I, you got to understand, people is coming to their own. You can't try to bully everybody. You can't try to check everybody because with the respect that you thought you didn't earn, nigga, in the league, other motherfuckers, they respect you, but they're not going to also let you hold them. So she might even respect your gang glider, but you can't try to hold everybody glider because you did that in the past to other motherfuckers and let that shit fly, nigga, because they was pumps, they was hoes. But I'm saying, you going to run across them couple of them niggas. They ain't gonna let you do that, grinder. You know what I'm saying? So, dog, grinder, you can't be trying to do that to everybody. You can't try to little bro, everybody, grinder. Or little sis, everybody, grinder, per se, nigga. So, what Kia did what she was supposed to do, nigga. She, <laughs> get the hand on my fucking face. Oh, you for real? All right, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, nigga, I done went a lot of niggas, nigga. <laughs> and I got a lot of niggas took gone, nigga, on the woo woo, woo nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you don't let nobody walk up on you like that. So, yeah, shout out to the kid, nigga. And next, nigga, what I'm gonna say, uh, so yeah, I got the Mercury losing to the, uh, the Lynx. Then third, I got the fever being the sun. Then I got uh the aces being the motherfucking um I got the aces being the motherfucking um storm. And shout out to my girl Diggins. I seen uh no she from the five seven folks, you know, South Bend shit. That's you know, that's my city. Shout out to them, but I also see her too. She got a I seen that move she did on Clark, she gotta stop paying on Clark too. You, you have to do that. Yeah, sad. But you know, she was. I don't think it was. It was. It was. It wasn't premeditated like the other ones. That one was just in the moment because she was losing, and Clark was busting ass. So I give her a pass on that. Yeah, sad. But yeah. So, but if I could pick who's gonna be in the finals, this is the year for the Liberty. The Liberty don't make the fucking finals this year, bro. I'm gonna say you know, get your mad like both the whole team, but they, it's a disappointing year. There's no pressure on the motherfucking uh, aces to three peak. You know, it's more pressure on the Liberty to wear it all. Because they've I, by far been the best team in the league this whole year. So, yeah, give me uh, Liberty in the finals. And then give me... It's a 1-4. So, I mean, the Aces will face Liberty in the... Okay, so, so then if Liberty beat the Aces, give me... Who's going to come out there, too? Give me... Uh, fuck it. Let's have some fun with it. Give me the Liberty and motherfucker um, Lynx in the finals. But then I think the Lynx beat... The Liberty in the finals. Ooh, so I got the Lynx win the championship. But on some fun shit, I like to see uh, uh, Fever make the finals just so Mayhem can happen. And then Clark win it all. So they go on some fun shit. That's what I want to see happen. But if I had to be real with y'all, nigga, give me the Lynx and motherfucking Liberty in the finals and the Lynx beat the Liberty, nigga. On the real, nigga. But to me, the Liberty is the best team. So it really is up to them to lose. But I'm going to talk about that more on the show we got coming for y'all. Nigga, that y'all that we announced, nigga. Well, they, we just gonna talk all WNBA, nigga. But yeah, nigga, I'm gone. Love. Fuck out of here, man. For real. Hey, season eight coming soon. I want season eight coming soon. Our women league is coming soon as well. Before I get about it here, I just wanna let y'all know. Thank you for sticking along and thank you for, you know, being patient. But we back. And I'm also gonna do something where ah, we gonna announce that later. Love, nigga. Season eight. season seven wrap up. Summer wrap up. Season eight. Here we go. Let's get it.